Well, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much indeed uh, for your attendance uh, this evening. We do apologise for the uh, slightly uh, uh, delayed kickoff to uh, this evening's event. This is our Meet the Owners event, of course, uh, an event which has been uh, given a platform to fans uh, for several years now, and we're delighted uh, to be continuing uh, that tradition this evening. Just a little bit of housekeeping uh, to start with, if we can ask for all mobiles to either be switched to silent or off, I'll just give you the opportunity in which to do so right now. And uh, the fire exits are clearly marked in the uh, case of an evacuation this evening. So, ladies and gentlemen, uh, the platform is yours to ask the uh, questions uh, tonight. Of course, I will be uh, holding things together as much as possible. Our top table are here present with me. Usually that would be down to me uh, to announce our top table tonight, but I've struck a little bit of a deal with our star striker. He's promised me uh, five minutes on the, uh, on the pitch tomorrow night if he can announce the top table. Is that right, John? Reluctantly, yeah. <laughs> A great goal on Saturday. He's going to introduce our top table. Put your hands together for John Marquis. Uh, good evening, everyone. Good evening. Uh, first of all, we've uh, sitting in the main seat, I guess. We've uh, got our new manager, Grant McCann. He obviously picks the team. <laughs> uh, next down the line, we have Vice Chairman Andy Watson. And the uh, second most important, because I suppose he pays my wages, <laughs> we have uh, the Chairman, David Blunt. Followed by someone else who's very important because it's the one that normally tells me off, it's Gavin Baldwin. <laughs> and then finally, the person who I try to stay out of the way of in case I do get told off <laughs> is Terry Bramble. Excellent, seamless and flawless, just like his uh, performances as well. So, ladies and gentlemen, collective round of applause for this evening's top table. David, I'm going to just start things off by uh, coming to you. Good to see you. Um, obviously, a, long, a lot of water has passed under the bridge uh, during the summer. We've had uh, a new manager uh, installed in, in Grant there. Uh, can you just uh, tell us a little bit about the process and uh, what led you towards uh, that appointment of Grant McCann at the club? Thank you for that uh, <laughs> loaded question to start with. Um, what I will do is, is go through the process, I think, which... Uh, which is important that what we like to do as a board of directors is to go through processes. Uh, we unfortunately uh, lost our previous manager, I'm uh, not sure quite why, because uh, to this date I haven't spoken to him regarding why. Um, so that was an unfortunate thing from our perspective. Uh, so we advertised and we advertised in uh, and Gavin led the way in this regard, but we advertised nearly 120 applicants for the job. And so that took a bit of sifting through, as you can appreciate, and some excellent candidates amongst them. And we shortlisted six people, in which Gavin and myself uh, interviewed those six people, in which Grant obviously was one of them. And out of that, we did another shortlist uh, into three uh, which Grant was one and two other applicants who were, would have been very creditable uh, managers of the football club. And uh, the full board of directors met the three applicants and it was a unanimous decision that Grant uh, would be our new manager and I think hopefully, and I'm sure it will be a good decision that we've made in and around that. Regarding the, uh, the way we did it is that we identify a number of objectives that we wanted for the new manager to do. Uh, the principal one is, is obviously that we would uh, secure championship football. And so that was one of the main objectives with a number of other objectives. And Grant was the outstanding candidate. And so uh, we interviewed him, I think, on a Monday. Uh, we made his mind up literally immediately. 
and Gavin and Grant met, I think, probably on the Tuesday, Wednesday, um, and Grant uh, kindly accepted our offer, and uh, we were pleased to have him, and, uh, and what a great job he's doing so far. So that's the process that we went through. Thank you, Jonathan. I hope that uh, helps in understanding how we come about choosing Grant as well. Thank you very much, uh, David, for your uh, very, very uh, expansive uh, answer to the question there. Grant, if I can uh, just turn to you, uh, first of all, very warm welcome to Doncaster Rovers. Um, bit of a bending period so far, but a very strong start to the season. Yeah, firstly, thank you very much for the, the support I've received so far. Um, it's, been, it's been great. Uh, the players have appreciated it. Um, I thought the fans Saturday were outstanding at Peterborough. The best I've seen them so far, especially in the away game. Um, but it's uh, it, it's been an okay start for us. Um, you know, I think the players already are starting to get to know me. Um, I'll never settle for mediocrity. Um, there's definitely more from this group. Uh, I said to them after the game, they need to believe it. And I said to the staff as well that, that you know we can win this league. That's that's what I firmly believe. We can win the league. There's nothing to be feared of in this league. There's nothing that stands out and, and you look and you think they're, they're going to be difficult to play against. You know, we played the so-called best team in the league so far in Peterborough on Saturday, Portsmouth the week before. We should be coming out with six points. So um, there's a long way to go. There's a long way to go. We all know that. Um, and we just need to you know, keep our focus on us and uh, you know, we'll do okay. Grant, thanks very much indeed uh, for your thoughts there. We're getting uh, things started. So what we're going to do now is going to open our Questions up to the floor. Uh, if there's anything you would like to uh, ask our top table tonight, now is the time. Uh, we're looking for our first question uh, down here from this gentleman here. What's your name, sir, and who's your question for? Ryan, it's for Gavin. Gavin, after 10 years, why is them staircase uh, shut off? The middle one. Because before long, there wouldn't be an accident. They all rush to that far corner. I'd like to see it open again. Yeah, and um, basically, the, to play football, the stadium has to be licensed, and it's licensed by various authorities, such as the Safety Advisory Group. The Safety Advisory Group, Counterterrorism Group, did an analysis of the stadium before this season started, and recommended that that staircase be closed, as you said. We have used the evidence at the start of this season to appeal against that decision. Marie, the stadium manager, has got a meeting with the SAG to be arranged, but imminently. The emails are flying around now agreeing the date, hopefully this week, and we will be making representations that can they reconsider that decision. We're using the evidence that we gathered through Marie watching, observing, um, the, you know, the bottleneck, for instance. So we'd like to say that we totally agree with ourselves at this stage, and we will be looking to come to the solution that you're asking for, or at least another solution. So we agree with you, yes. I'd like to see it open on Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> so would I. Oh dear. Thank you very much indeed uh, for that, Brian. We'll uh, go to this gentleman uh, just sat in the same section. What's your name, sir? And who's your question for? Bob, and it's, Bob, and it's a continuation from that uh, previous answer. Um, could we have some better lighting in the two end staircases, please? Um, I'll look to Marie for that one. To come over three five three was a bit dark in that area. Um, it's not as straightforward as, as changing the, the, the balls and bushing, so we have had to have um, electricians come out and take a look at what can be installed in that area. Um, the, the company that we're working with has said it will be this week. They haven't given me a date yet, uh, but we are battery on a daily basis. But um, barring something from the company letting us down um, for the <coughs> Thank you very much indeed, and thank you, Marie, for your input on that. We've got a question on the front row, and his Rovers track it up. What's your name, sir, and who's your question for? My name's David, it's for Grant. Um, just want to say, well done on the quality football we've played so far. Been absolutely fantastic, <coughs> best we've played in a while. Um, on other hand to that, in the past few years, which has nothing to do with you, obviously you weren't part of us, but I've noticed, if you look at stats alone from set plays, Coming back to your point from seconds ago, we should have had six points. Is it have we got an issue with set plays? Because we seem to concede a lot from a set play. Open play, defence is brilliant a minute, but set plays 
I'm kind of scared every time we have a corner or anything like that. Is, do you agree with me or have you looked at stats? Well, that, funny enough, that was something I spoke to the players about this morning um, in, a, in, a, in a team meeting. Um, we were so disappointed to concede off a wide free kick uh, on Saturday. It was something I mentioned um, at half time about their threat. Who was Tafazoli? I think the lads at the back of the room will, will, will tell you that. Um, we got disjointed off a wide free kick on, on, on Saturday. Uh, and I agree with you, I've, I've looked at the videos from last year, I've seen the games. A lot of goals came from set players. Um, but I think up until that point, um, I know we conceded a couple of goals against Blackpool in the Cup from a throw-in um, and from a, a second phase in the corner. I think up until at that point, I think we've been very good in the league. Um, and we've dealt with most things that's been thrown in our box. Um, we did get disjointed, and I agree with you, um, but that is something that we will continue to work and get better at, um, because it, it, it does win and lose your games, you know, and that's, that, that is the bottom line. Um, albeit, we should be tuning a lot from one of our set players on Saturday. So if you, if you see that back, there's absolutely no touch, no contact. Um, so we are getting better on both of them, um, and it definitely will help us, you know, moving forward. Great stuff. Uh, good question, and uh, thank you for answering that, uh, Grant. I'm going to move over. I'll come to you next, sir, if that's okay. Gentleman here with a blue t-shirt. And your name, sir, and who's your question for? My name's Rick. The question is for Grant. Again, congratulations on the quality of football we're playing. It's, it's been a breath of fresh air. I've seen most of the games this season. The only thing that does concern me a bit, after you saying you hope and think we can win the league, is I would agree that our best, 13 or 14 players are as good as anything I've seen in this league but there does seem to be a bit of a gap and I won't expect you to name names obviously there does seem to be a bit of a gap then between the people who are going to have to come in to fill these places when there's injuries and suspensions etc I just wonder if you honestly think that we have the depth of cover that we need to win this league Do you want to give me the 14 players you think's good enough? <laughs> I will if you want, <laughs> but I don't think that's fair for you to name names. But if, if you if you want me to tell you, apart from the team on on Saturday, the other three, or, or I think are good enough, then I will do it. Go on then. Okay. So <laughs> you've got the eleven who started. Then you've got um, Joe Wright. You've got um, Matty Blair, and obviously. <laughs> I, I knew we were here because I see you on the way in, but, but, but I do yeah. mean that. And the reason I, why I asked you because I was hoping you were gonna, not going to say my name. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and the other goalkeeper. I can't, I can't comment yet on the lad from Scotland, or the lad you brought in from Peace Brothers, because I haven't really seen much of him. Well, to answer your question, I think, I think we've got a very good squad. I really do, and I think it's important. I've just come into the club, I'm here probably 10 weeks. Um, everyone has to get a fair chance. Um, I back myself and my coaching staff to improve people. Um, I think if you see me talking about probably last year at Peterborough, the players that left Peterborough last year went for a combined total of 10 million pounds. The players that we coached last year at Peterborough, um, all to the championship. So I think it's important that the boys get the opportunity to show what they've got, you know, and I disagree with you to say that there's 13 or 14. I think we've got a good 18 or 19 that can come into our team. Maybe not all at the same time, as you've seen in the, in the game against Blackpool. Um, but if you're adding one or two who wasn't in, or into the team, who wasn't in the team, sorry, on Saturday into that group, it wouldn't distract the group. And I think the lads would agree with that, you know. We, we see them every day in training. Um, there's some really good young boys there here who want to do well, want to work, um, want to improve. And I think as a manager and a coach in Cliff, um, that is what you want. You know, that is exactly what you want. People who want to get better, improve for the football club, and ultimately, you know, have a successful career. Thank you very much, Grant. Right, our next question for this gentleman here. What's your name, sir? Uh, Paul. Just a quick question, being as honest as you can. Why did you apply to come to Doncaster? <laughs> <laughs> it's 
a, it's a good question. Um, I think the whole, the whole, you know, Doncaster model was was perfect, fit perfect for me. Um, the club Doncaster, everything around it, um, knowing people at the club uh, already and how they work uh, was important. Um, and I, you know, once the job came available, I, I remember saying to my wife because it's you know I didn't put a CV into any other job while I was out of work. I wanted to wait for the right opportunity. Um, and this was the right opportunity for me. And you know, I've got uh, all I can say is thanks to you know the board and uh, for, for offering me to come in and speak to them. And uh, you know, um, I'm here now, and I just want to work hard. I want to do well for the football club and make sure we are successful. Thank you. Okay, next question uh, from this gentleman here. What's your name, sir, and who's your question for? Brian. Gavin, uh, I know the club was aspiring to uh, try and get to level two with the junior set-up. Uh, has that been achieved? Um, Kieran is in the room, and I'm looking for him now. Kieran runs our academy. Kieran's been with us for um, I'm look, probably more years than we care to remember at the moment. Three, four years, Kieran. Uh, and in my opinion, has taken the academy from uh, unrecognisable from where it was. We've had our recent EPP audit, and Kieran would probably be too modest to let you know, but we believe we're in the top four Cat 3 academies in the country. So the decision we've got to make now is, is it a good thing to be the top three, top four uh, of the Cat 3? What's the advantages, and what are the implications of being a Cat 2 academy? And we've got to have those dilemmas. Kieran at the moment is look, actively looking at that, and we'll present a paper to the board so that we can make that judgment going forward. It's not clear cut Academy 2 is better than Academy 3 because Cap 3, we can play all the teams that play in Cap 2, we just have to arrange the game separately. They're welcome with a cost because the facilities are significantly improved. You need an indoor football arena, for instance. So if we were to go to the board and say, you know, it will cost this, there's a dilemma to say, could that money be better spent on something completely different? And those are the questions. Kieran's going to come do the, the, the initial work, and I'm going to hand over to Kieran now just to give some quick thoughts, if that's okay. And then we will make the decision that's best for the whole football club based on what Kieran recommends. So if you're okay, if I can get Kieran to just say a few words, uh, contradict any, feel free to contradict anything I've said or or uh, I wouldn't dream of that. <laughs> I think I think Gavin's covered it really. There there is a big cost implication in moving to Category Two. Uh, and uh, we all need to be accepting that that, that, that is, it, is there. There's nothing we can do about that. They're the, they're the rules set down by the Premier League, effectively. Um, there's clear benefits, and it, I suppose it's down to me, if you like, to, to show that the benefits outweigh the significant cost. Um, what I will say is that the support that we already get as an academy from the club enables us to be as successful as we've been over the last couple of years. Um, that doesn't happen at clubs of our size, the rule, the, the level of support. So it's, it's greatly received, the, the support, and I know it will continue. Thank you very much, Kieran, for uh, those uh, few words there. Just, uh, just before we do move on to our next question, rather remiss of me not to acknowledge our signer who's here tonight, the lovely Karen, who is uh, providing interpretation for our hard of hearing and uh, deaf uh, fans that we have on the front row. So a very warm welcome uh, to Karen and also to our uh, friends down on the front row there. So uh, we do have uh, any more questions? You just planning yourself or would you like a question? He's just planning himself, right? Okay, so gentlemen on the back row. What's your name, sir? Who's your question for? Hi, it's Dave Schofield and uh, the question's for Grant. Uh, I'd just like to know who is your inspiration uh, in football management? I've, I've been fortunate enough to work with some really good managers uh, in my career. Um, you know, Darren Ferguson being one, for example, who was, who was excellent for us at Peter Brown. We had promotions and Johnson Payne Trophy wins and things like that. So, um, but if I was going to name one, I, I would probably say Nigel Adkins was someone who I looked up to. Um, loved the way he worked. Never ever did you see him down or high. He was always really, really level. Um, win, lose or draw. Never let anything affect him and never let it into the group. So he's definitely someone who I've learned of a lot, as well as parts of others, um, good and bad. So 
And if I had to pick one, I'd say Nigel. Excellent. Okay, who's uh, next with a uh, question? Just uh, thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Andrew, David, Terry, are we okay? <laughs> Just waiting for their first questions. <laughs> yes, sir. What's your name? Ray. And who's your question for? Gary. <clears throat> What you did against uh, the, uh, the Wigan game, last game of the season, for the uh, season ticket holders in the East Stand was disgusting. Where you put 150 Wigan supporters in front of us, and we pay the most for that season ticket. Can I have your assurance that on October the 23rd, when we play Sunderland, who we'll have <clears throat> 24,000 season ticket holders, that you're not going to pull them with us again? I believe that we met straight out way afterwards and we explained the background behind it and you were quite your understanding of what had happened and we've given you those assurances already. Um, as I say, um, we were put in a situation whereby it was actually the Wigan Academy teams were uh, meant to go into that stand. They brought a number of parents with them and didn't behave appropriately. It's not a situation we've encountered before, but belt and braces, we've said that we will not put ourselves in that situation again. And as you say, you came to the stadium, we met, and uh, we gave you those assurances, and, and hopefully they were well received at the time. So, yes, it won't be happening at some point to conclude. One more question, can you, uh, at half time, turn the music down? <laughs> that, that is a typical, I was going to say, if you need a poll now, you get 50 cents today one way, 50 cents the other. So, that is one way we probably can't win. But has been well debated. But thank you. Excellent. Okay, this uh, very, very well known face here at the Club Mallow. Good evening, nice to see you. Who's your question for? Uh, I'm Sheila, and it's for Grant. Uh, like the others, super on Saturday. What a lovely day out that was. Some of the football was wonderful and well done. But keep it going. But let's get the three points next time. But what I want to ask is moving on to January. What are your hopes for Malik Wilkes and Herbie Kane? Because come on, Herbie Kane is something else. Are you hoping to continue the loan or to sign them? Or is it too early to say? Um, thanks, thanks, Sheila, for the question. Um, we have, we are in close contact with Leeds and Liverpool regarding Herbie and Malik, who I think that both of them um, have come into the group and fitted in superbly. Uh, I think they've added things that maybe the group didn't have. Um, previously, and that was one of the big factors why we brought them. So um, we can't, I can't give you a yes or a no at the minute. But what I will say is we are um, hopeful that they can see that they're enjoying their football here, that they're performing, um, that they're getting the exposure of what they what they need. You know, because if you look at Malik, he's probably played before he come here m maximum ten games in the football league. So he's getting better and better. Uh, Herbie hasn't played a single game, and he's getting and he's getting better and better. So we've been really impressed with both of them, um, and we are in in constant dialogue with Leeds and Liverpool and, and, and keeping them in touch with their progress. Thank you. Okay, let's uh, have a look around now. We're back to this uh, gentleman here. We'll come back uh, to you over there. Another question for me. Yeah, this is uh, David again for that. Coming back to the question, what's just been asked? The question of before about the youth team, if we need to upgrade, you've just answered your own question. For the quality of players and what we need to stop at the ground and what we need to keep, you really just answered your own question. We need them players to be here. We need that's what we need for like the future, not now, but in the future. We need that quality to to grow. Yeah, I mean, when um, Kieran answered the last question, I was going to ask him to invite, uh, take it one stage further because we get measured for a thing called productivity which is youngsters coming through into the first team. And again, if you look at the statistics, and I'm going to put Kerry on the spot and ask him to talk to you about it and maybe you know, name a few names. We're in such a different position now with youngsters coming through. And you know, Grant has been clear that there's youngsters that are playing for under-23s, which is a new development. We're in, we're in the Central League, for instance, that he'd happily put into the first team. You know, maybe not on a permanent basis, but just to blood at the stage. So, Kieran, are you okay just to talk about some of the international recognition we're getting, some of the productivity, etc., etc.? Thank you. The productivity, if I recall this right, I think we were placed about eighth 
edible. There's 45 Cat 3 clubs, and I think we were placed eighth. And that, that's over the last three years. Um, and going beyond that, you've got the likes of Liam Mandeville and Mitchell Lund, don't forget those sorts of players, Harry Middleton in recent years. Um, Danny Amos is probably the one that's jumped on the quickest. Um, and I, I know, well, I, I don't mind saying this, I know for a fact that Gaffer would play him. He'd have no hesitation in playing Danny Amos, he's shown that already. Um, we've got other young pros such as Will Longbottom, who's recovering very well from um, uh, quite a big operation at the end of last season. Uh, you've all seen Will play in, in, in the first team and he'll play in the first team again, I've no doubt about that. And we've got four of the first year pros who are developing quite nicely. They all develop at different rates at these young ages and you're totally right. You know, that's, that's what we should be doing, producing players for our first team. And we will be doing, we are doing. And Danny Amos, I think, is the best example at the minute. Okay. And just to uh, complete that answer, the board up here, and, and by that I don't mean myself, but Kieran made representations to the chairman and, and the two owners to invest in the under-23s this year. And that the board have invested this year high six figures so that we can have players coming through. Because what we had was the academy and then a big gulf between that and the first team, and so we're losing players. We've now got an under-23, which, which the guys on the top table here have invested significantly in to enable, enable them to have extra one-to-one -one tuition. They come in and train in on Wednesday. They've got their own fitness coach, for instance, and it's to give them every chance of being that player for the future. So a lot of it, to be fair with that back slightly, is because of the confidence that Kieran's installed in everything he's trying to achieve. And also, we passionately want players from Doncaster playing for Doncaster. It means so much. And that's part of the whole reason that we're here. And, and therefore, as I say, you know, money where the mouth is, cliche saying, that has happened this year and should show significant improvement once again. Um, the one criticism that we had under the EPP audit, which looks at how we develop players, take them through to the first team, wasn't how we coach people, how we train people. It was our recruitment and scouting, etc. So again, Kieran's looking at how we can strengthen that. That was the one criticism they could find to say it's good, but it's not in the top four like everything else that you're doing. So we're currently looking at how we scout our youngsters at the moment. But a lot of our emphasis would again be on recruiting in Doncaster because we want Doncaster lads playing for Doncaster. It makes them proud, hopefully makes you proud. And, and as I say, just to be boring, these guys have backed that with, with financially to make it happen. And Kieran's leading on that process with Grant now. OK, we're looking for uh, more hands being raised about the issues uh, you would like to uh, raise this evening. Let's uh, go back over to this gentleman here. We've already heard from him once. We'll come back to you in a minute, sir. What's your name, sir? I need a question for. Okay, my name is uh, Andy. Uh, I suppose I guess it's uh, for Grant on the playing side. I just wanted to reinforce how much I've enjoyed some of the football this season. Uh, it's a lot better than towards the back end of last season. I know you guys don't want to hear that, but it is. I was losing the will to live at the back end of the last season. Um, so, yeah, the, the performance at Peterborough was absolutely superb at times, and similarly at Scunthorpe. Um, but my only criticism is not defensively, it's we're not converting enough of our chances. So I wonder what you thought about this. I mean, the BBC had for Scunthorpe, we had 26 shots on goal, or headers and 23 at Peterborough. Um, so I just feel it's such a shame that we're not quite converting enough. I just wonder what you thought about that. Um, oh, I, I agree with you. I do agree with you. I think we showed our ruthless edge probably in the first couple of games. Um, so it's there. Um, if, if we keep the performances like we're doing, the results will come. Uh, the goals will come. The, the confidence will grow. The players will start believing in themselves more. Um, and you'll see goals coming again. But well, I 100% agree with you, and, and the players know it as well, we, we do need to be more ruthless. Whether that's defending a wide free kick uh, in the middle of our goal, or scoring at the other end when we get the chances. Um, so it's it's all the work, you know, at the minute it's a work in progress for us. We have got people who can score goals. We've got the best striker in the football league. Is it, is it a song, isn't it? Yeah, so we've got people who can score goals here. Um, you know, and... Uh, it's true, yeah, there you go. So it's, uh, we've got people who can score goals, we just need to keep creating the chances for them and, and, and that'll come. Excellent, got another question there from this gentleman sat beside me now, who's your question for? Uh, Andrew and Terry. 
<laughs> uh, first of all, I'd like to thank you for your contributions to the club. Yes, uh, yeah. The question is, do you enjoy it? <laughs> Yeah. Um, don't always enjoy putting the money in, no, but um, that's, that's part of football. Um, but yes, absolutely. We, you know, talking from the for the Watson family, we're a, we're football fans. You know, we're Doncaster Rovers fans through and through. And if we weren't owners, we weren't funders, we'd still be here supporting the club, um, watching the matches Saturday, Tuesday. So yes, we get a lot of enjoyment, a lot of stress as well. Um, you know, I was at Peter on Saturday and I thought, as has been said already tonight, I thought it was one of the best <coughs> Rovers performances I've ever seen. And I'm going back, you know, to the Sean O'Driscoll day, some of the great performances then. Some of the passing football, I thought, in spells was, was brilliant. They couldn't get near us. And they, even after they'd scored on Saturday, it was, it was all us. And again, you know, towards the end of the match, uh, they were hanging on and their supporters sat around us were were more than relieved just to, to get a point. So, yes, we do enjoy it. I certainly enjoy it. As I say, if we weren't here, we'd still be here supporting the club. Um, so, yes, it's, 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 it's fun. Yes, we enjoy it. Thank you, Andy. <clears throat> if I may take over now then, uh, and speak maybe from the Bramall family. Uh, the Bramall family is only represented by my wife and myself. Uh, that my ch our children and uh, families don't actually get too inspired by football. But whether you, it shouldn't come as a surprise to any of you now to know that uh, my pleasure is in actually building things, and at the moment uh, the sole focus, uh, not the sole focus, the biggest focus of attention is building Club Doncaster. And I don't think I've come to the start of a season being so excited about the prospects of it. Uh, when Dick was here, he and I spoke to you about you know, what we wanted to achieve for Doncaster was Doncaster Rovers was sustainability. And, and I'm pleased to say that uh, you know, we're making gr great headway down that road because we want it to continue and not just depend upon uh, the Watson family and the Bramall family. We want to be able to, it to be able to stand on its own, and and you 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 guys to feel that you know you're a real part of it. And it's not just who's in here as supporters. It's people who are joining in the other activities. Uh, Carl and his uh, and, and the Dons, the rugby league side, uh, the fit the fit Rovers people who are with us tonight, and of course you know we've got a couple of our great players here too, and. And you, everybody here is important. We're building a greater team than the one just on the pitch. But the biggest thrill I know does come for even me. When, when we actually do win a game and we win it well and the goals are flying in. Because I suppose it's the same for every football supporter in the land. But even the ones who support the greatest teams know that that's not a 100% record. They're going to get some difficult days. I believe the Rovers of difficult days are behind us now, and we're going to get more good days than difficult days. Yes, and that really excites me. Thank you. Just leading on from what uh, Terry's just touched upon there, building things and building the, the club Doncaster, the, the whole structure around the football club and around the whole place, as you can see, we've got uh, all of these on your seats. If we can just uh, take a little look, it'll just give you a little bit of a, a brief snapshot of what the Club Doncaster uh, Foundation is all about. There's, there's lots of statistics on there, but they are easily digestible from your good selves as far as what sort of progress we're making. We've, we've touched upon, obviously, the Fit Rovers. We've got some of the representatives of the Fit Rovers here tonight. I'm just going to go across to one of them and, uh, and just ask them for his opinion on on how it's, how it's changed you as a person. Yeah, okay, again, what we should make clear here, all the guys here from Fit Rovers, we're, we're, sorry, we're, we're fans of Rovers. We're not, we're not paid by the club in any way. We are fa fans of Rovers. So yeah, we joined Fit Rovers, an eight, eight week program. Um, it's about getting us active. And the one thing I'll say for me is, it's got me playing football again. 58 year old, 
I haven't played football for a number of years. A lot like my colleagues here, I'm back playing fo football every week. I'm doing a lot more than that. Um, but one thing I want to add, the produce, one of the proudest moments of my, of my life, we got to play football in that pitch down there. Right, Andy Butler played with us as well. Two, two teams, guys from different walks of life, but with the same aim. I have my grandkids down at that game. So for me, my, my, my mental well-being is sky high. This, this, this project, anybody who wants to find out about the project, anybody who's not heard about the project, and it is, it is at this point mainly for men uh, over 30, although that's sort of changed slightly. But if anybody wants to talk to us about Fit Rovers, it's certainly the best thing that happened in a number of years. Anybody who wants to talk to, about, talk to us about it, you'll follow us after, after the event. Thanks, Tim. I'm just going to bring over to Gavin. Gavin, some, some really, really special comments there from that gentleman there. And it encapsulates what we're trying to achieve as a, not just as a football club, but as the, the whole package, as it were. You know, looking at the, the facts and figures on here, there's education, there's fitness, there's well-being, and it all surrounds what goes on in and around the football club as well. Yeah, I mean, the Club Doncaster business model, um, it started off as a spirit, as a culture, whereby we wanted to improve two main sport club, sports clubs in Doncaster, i.e. the rugby and the football. And, and it's now so much more with the foundation, the work that the foundation have done. Uh, we're talking today about the school that's run down below. I don't know whether you guys know much about the school, but for instance, 140 students, uh, up to 150 people, educated on a daily basis downstairs. And that happens every day. So we've got the sports coach, we've got the NCS, which Jan at the back runs. Um, the numbers that go away, the amount of volunteering hours that they put into the community, um, all the numbers are there, so I won't bore you with them, are massive. Um, we, essentially, and so I get quite passionate about this, is we want a football team that's playing in the league above. We want a rugby team that's playing in the league above. And what we want to do is to generate enough revenues from the stadium, Club Doncaster itself, that these guys only invest in if they choose to because we've got the playing budgets and the revenues to have sustainable uh, teams in the leagues above and that is our whole passion and everything we're about in the meantime if we can and it sounds corny but it's genuinely true improve life chances improve accessibility to sport education to everyone in Doncaster and give them a better opportunity to enjoy their lives to raise their aspirations then we're hoping that this gives you the ability to be really, really proud of your club. So the perfect marriage is we're out in the communities, we're educating people, we're doing diversionary activity, we're improving mental well-being, and all of that is coupled with the Championship Football Club and, and as I say, the Don's playing in the league above. And we hope very soon that that's the position we'll be in and that you guys will be proud of what your club is trying to achieve. Okay, we have a question from this gentleman here. Good evening. What's your name and who's your question for? Hello, good evening. My name is Jeff. Um, first of all, I'd like to really just congratulate the board on recruiting a manager who, when we go nil-nil down, ten minutes to go and the goalie gets sent off against one of the top teams, we then proceed to attack for every single minute uh, and deserve the point. And that, for me, has been one of the highlights of my 50 years of supporting me. <laughs> So I suppose that's congratulations to the board for picking the chap who's done it, but obviously the manager as well. Uh, my question's a very different one though. Uh, I know I won't be the only person in this room uh, who followed the Doncaster Bells over the years, uh, supported them where possible, and of course admired all their achievements. Uh, they clearly need a helping hand right now, uh, and I know there's been one or two public statements on behalf of Club Doncaster, but I would appreciate an update as to things that are happening perhaps in the short term or perhaps even longer term uh, between the club and the Bells. Yeah, it's a very timely question. Um, for instance, we're meeting the Bells again on Thursday, as short as Thursday, to continue conversations. <coughs> the Bells, as you say, have got a very proud history um, and therefore they've got to make sure that whatever they do for themselves is right for them and their history and the future going forward. We, from our point of view, have got to protect the business model of Club Doncaster so that we, you know, we don't hurt what we're trying to achieve now. We've had ongoing dialogue for quite a period of time, and we believe that 
really positive conversations have been had, reference the bells either move morphing completely into the Club Doncaster model or a model of assistance. Um, and we're hoping that we'll bottom those conversations very, very soon. But as I say, to be fair to the bells, they've got a proud history and they need to make sure that they're doing the right thing by themselves and we need to protect uh, everything we're trying to achieve. Okay, so our next question comes from this gentleman over here. Let's make our way around here. What's your name, sir, and who's your question for? Uh, my name is Jim, it's for Brown. I uh, just want to say football is absolutely amazing. Best football I've seen since, like Andy said, the Toronto Driscoll days. But compared to last season, I think the last five games last season, we didn't have a shot on target. Um, so obviously, you come in completely changed, but what has actually changed from your side of things? Because you're doing something different, obviously, from what the previous manager didn't do. So, what is that? <laughs> I mean, I watched, I watched games last year. I seen, I seen that come the back end of last season, um, there wasn't many wins, uh, a few defeats. Um, why? I, I'm not sure. I wasn't a manager. Um, was I interested to find out? Not really. Um, I wanted to, to stamp my own real authority onto the onto the group and how we train. Um, and it, and it, I think it goes, it started really the first day of pre-season. Um, and when we got to La Manga, when we set out targets and we set the way we're going to play and uh, the pre-season games kicked in. So I think it, it, it comes from every day. Um, positivity, playing forward, you know, uh, positive football, um, looking to create chances as much as we can. Uh, you know, that's, and, and looking at the group, we've got those sort of players that want to do that, you know. Um, we wanted to make sure our fullbacks were more aggressive this year, you know, in terms of defensively and attacking. And I think they've showed already how aggressive we are. Um, we wanted our, forward, our forwards to making runs, you know, John will tell you, I speak to him all the time about he'll probably make 20, 25 runs in a game. He may only get it twice and he might score once. But once he stops making them runs, then the goals dry up. So, it, you know, people like that, they're the sort of messages that we're drumming into them. Midfield players need to contribute uh, goals, assists, forward runs, creating chances. So, there's a lot to do. There's more work to be, to be done because we do need to create the uh, score the chances. We are creating them. Um, but I think if our football continues the way we're going, um, the chances will good, you'll start dropping in the back of the net for us. Excellent. Thank you very much uh, for that concise answer there. And uh, who's our next question coming from tonight? Don't forget, this is your platform, everybody. Your chance to uh, ask the questions that you wouldn't normally get the opportunity to with our biannual Meet the Owners event. So do we have another uh, question coming up? I'm being pointed over here. I'm not seeing a hand up in the air. I am now. There we go. What's your name, sir? Who's your question for? Uh, Grant. But possibly. My name's Ken. And I'm just wondering about the players that we got out on loan. Do we get feedback all the time on them? Is there any chance that you think, well, they're doing really well, we need to pull them back? Yes, there's feedback all the time. Um, John Schofield, Kieran Scarf, uh, Lee Glover, um, myself, Cliff, we're always, you know, every Monday morning. It's one of the, it's one of the first things we speak about. How did the loan players get on? Um, so I think some of the younger ones are doing quite well. Um, obviously Luke McCulloch's played the last few games for Tranmere. Liam Mandeville scored a couple of goals, I think, in the last few games. Um, you know, the, one or two of the young lads, I mean, is it Tamworth, Kieran? Uh, Shane Blaney uh, and James Morris are, are at Tamworth. Uh, Grantham, yeah, Max Waters is at Grantham, who, who is somebody we think could have a, have a potential in playing our first team because he's, he's quick and, and he can run. So there's, the boys are out there, we are keeping close contact with them and making sure they're okay. And, and the biggest thing is is making sure that they get game time. And, and that was the case with Luke McCulloch especially, um, that we need him to play football, uh, competitive football, uh, and not 23's reserve team football. So that was a big, uh, one of the big reasons to send him out the run. Okay, we now move on there to our next question from this gentleman here. What's your name, sir, and who's it for? It's Jordan. Uh, I'm not really sure who's to, but um, we've been, there's been talk over the last two, three seasons about a Thailand trip. Um, I'm not necessarily saying it has to be there, but you know, like you talk about Lamanga, and, and, and I know that they've been to Portugal a few times. 
Is it not a chance of like including fans and letting us go? Because I know that Sheffield Wednesday and a lot of, a lot of clubs like that let the fans go as well. And it'd be nice. I mean, we travel everywhere around this country, but it'd be nice to get a bit of sun as well. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Summer on record. <laughs> <laughs> Just that word from the manager that he doesn't mind, so uh, we can have a look at it. Um, what we have done in the past is take the advice of the manager, because obviously everything about pre-season has to be about the preparation of the first team. And that will, it, it may not be what you're looking to hear, but that will be the prime diver between any decision that we make. However, the current manager that we have got um, is it has just given the word that he's quite happy to look at that. So we start planning through Mary at the back of our pre-season tour as early as December this year. So we will communicate as early as we can what our thoughts are and where we're looking to go, for instance. So, uh, yeah, we'll keep in touch. I think I think the only difficult part of that as well is pre-season trip is quite early. Um, and fans always want to come and see a game, you know, when, when we're abroad. Um, whether it's Spain, Portugal, Thailand, River, you know, you want to see a game. And sometimes in the first week or two weeks, it's way too early for the players to play a game. So um, it's something we probably need to speak about in terms of when we do go on a pre-season tour. But ideally, I would I would prefer to go away in the first week or the second week of pre-season, which is too early for a game, in my opinion. OK, thank you. Very, very yeah, different question there. We're going to make our way back along to the front row. Young man with the, uh, the blue T-shirt. Not picking his nose, just in case you're wondering. What's your name, sir? Who's your question for? My name's Mark, and it's for it's for Gavin, Terry, David, and Andrew. Really, I just want to go on record and say what a fantastic package my season ticket was. Fantastic, it really is. And every year it just gets better and better. Uh, loving football, loving coming to the club at the moment. And I want to go on record really and just sort of defend the previous manager. I thought he did an excellent job. Um, I thought he obviously got his promotion from League Two. Uh, a little bit disappointed, but I'm sure Grant's going to carry on, and I'm, I'm absolutely, absolutely buzzing with football he's playing in. Everything's coming together, so that's great. I just want to go on record and say that. Thank you. Thank you. Reference the season ticket package. Our aspiration through the DNA card, which we are relaunching um, towards the end of September, is that in reality your season ticket becomes free because of the offers on that DNA card. And if we can get the products on the DNA card good enough, then effectively your card, your season ticket will be free. And that's what we're challenging ourselves to do. So we need a range of products on there that you use on a daily basis or some significant spend that equate to the sum of what you would have paid. Because if your season ticket is equivalent free, then in our world, renewals are a very easy process. We'll get more season ticket holders will get greater atmosphere, which will assist the team. It will generate greater revenues, which gives Grant more money uh, to, to when building the squad. So it's a complete win-win. As I say, Sean is relaunching uh, the DNA card for the Bradford game, um, making it more accessible. There's more products on there, uh, working with Laura. So from our point of view, our aspiration to be judged on is, can we make your season ticket equivalent of free? And that's the progress that we'll keep reporting to you. Yeah, this is for Grant as well. So his previous question was to come out, what's the reason why we're playing so good now and stuff like that? It's, for me, the reason for alone was Alf, Alf and May over, over, over the day. How we played was absolutely... I want Alf, Alf and May's biggest fan before that game. And I'm sure everybody knows what game I'm on about. He, he won, he was a man man at match. He, I've, ne I've never seen him play, so he wanted to win. You, you, you're talking about the Blackpool game. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, I mean, I'll, we, I love Alfie. Cliff, Cliff love, loves Alfie as well. Um, when I talk about people wanting to learn and improve, uh, as a manager and a coach, that is exactly what you want. You know, a, a coachable person who wants to learn, wants to get better. Um, and he's been outstanding, Alfie. He's been so unfortunate that he hasn't had much game time at the minute because of the form of Wilkes, Marquis. Um, you know, he's been unfortunate, but he's got so much to offer, you know, when he, when he does play a game, um, his movement, his, his runs in behind, his shoot, you know, something we worked on with him, his goal the other day, shooting early uh, on his left foot, 
you know, there's, there's a lot to come from Alfie May. And you got you got to remember, he's quite young in terms of football league games as well. I think it was in his first season last year. So he's. I've seen these players that come from non-league and go on to make, you know, make an unbelievable career for themselves. Especially my previous club that I've just come from, and you know, it wouldn't surprise me if Alfie did that as well. Okay, looking around uh, for our uh, final couple of questions uh, on the way. Time really has uh, flown this evening, and uh, now we're going to make our way to the back and ask this gentleman uh, what his name is and who's question for. Well, it's Martin, and the answer is for Grant. You know, the long players that we send out, you say they want game time. Is that a guarantee that the players that come to us on loan have game time? What do you mean, their clubs demand that? Yeah, yeah, to say, well, they come, they come to Doncaster, but we've got to play them. No. Oh. No, I mean, the conversation I had with Liverpool, uh, Liverpool were okay, actually. You know, some of these clubs can, and Mary's at the back of the room, she, she knows what, uh, what I mean, is, for example, if we take a Herbie Kane, um, if he plays, we have to pay. We don't have to pay a bare minimum. If he doesn't, then we have to pay a lot more. Um, but the conversation I had with Liverpool was that's not going to happen. You know, this is what we're paying for him, and that's it. His agent wanted to send him to a club where he was going to be guaranteed to play. It was not County, actually. Kevin Nolan was go was guaranteeing Herbie Kane that he'll play every week. My answer to his agent was, I don't think any manager. In and the country can guarantee anybody they're going to play because it's it's down to form, it's down to who you're playing against. You just can't say you're going to play him every week. But Herbie Kane, as you see, was on the bench against South End, um, and he plays the next game and he hasn't he hasn't looked back. So there's no guarantees from any of the lone players um, from their clubs that they play. Uh, if they deserve to play, they'll play. If they don't, then somebody else will get a chance. Okay, I do believe we've got a, uh, a question over that, uh, over the far side. Do we have one over, over the far end? We do indeed. Your second question of the night, sir. Yeah, it's probably to Gavin, actually. Um, Peter Brad didn't go for a simple reason, being I want to pay nearly £30 for technically Division Three football. I think it's an absolute joke. Um, I want to say, do you meet with, like, the EFL or anything? Because I know in the Premier League now, the away teams are capped at £30. And I'm literally, we were literally paying two pound less than that for two leagues below. I mean, is there anything that goes on behind the scenes? No. Basically, the EFL um, leave it to the commercial forces of that club. However, what we do do differently is that you'll see that in the past we've tried reciprocal offers to make football more affordable to both sets of fans. We go away, they go away. Um, so that is that is a uh, initiative that Sean is looking to complete at the moment. It, it, it's only small fry, but sometimes we work with the supporters club, for instance, to fund the buses and try and do some assistance that way. Um, but as I say, it, it, it's not a perfect model and clubs can charge what they want. Um, we try not to do that because we want more people here, we want a better atmosphere, and we hope that that will engender goodwill and therefore fans, we, our fans will be treated better when they go away. But as I say, what Sean Lockwood and the marketing team are doing at the moment is trying to negotiate rates with clubs so that we get a better rate for our fans and we're happy to give a better rate for their fans as well. And that's probably at this stage the best that we can do. Okay, gentlemen, uh, raising his hand just over that far side. We're uh, heading into the final couple of questions of this evening's Meet the Owners. We've heard from him already tonight. Another question, sir. It's Bob again. Um, are, are they are you pleased with the fan park? Is it doing what you want? Um, hopefully, what's more important is whether you guys are happy with it. Um, we believe it's going really well. We're committed to it. Um, it was an initiative that where we've acted as the servant of the fans because we met with the fans and said, what can we do differently? How can we improve your experience? And that was the number one thing that we were asked to do. So the reaction that we've had across the board has been fantastic to be fair and it's something that we're committed to work on on an ongoing basis to continue improving it. Um, you know, Sean and his team have done a brilliant job, Mark Hughes etc. have done a brilliant job in delivering that. But we want it to get bigger, better and that, and that is the aspiration. Um, for, and as I say, from our point of view, the biggest measure is are you guys happy with it? And if you are, we'll continue doing it. 
Right, okay, we're going to make this our uh, final question of the night, and uh, we're going to uh, bestow the honour upon you, sir. Yeah. Oh, it's Paul again. Just a general thing to everybody. Next year, next time we're sat here, and we're all sat in front of us, where do you think we'll be in a year's time? Or oh, hold it, we'll be. Like crystal ball, huh? <laughs> <laughs> the plan is to, for us to have a really good goal promotion. Um, that is the belief. I, I, I've, I've said it, I touched on it early on. Um, there's nothing to be scared of in this league. Uh, we need to believe in ourselves. The group need to believe in themselves. My staff need to believe in themselves. Um, and we all need to, to come together as one, as a whole club. Um, win, lose or draw, we'll stay level. Um, it's a long season. There's going to be some ups, hope, you know, a lot of ups and some downs. But we need to make sure we uh, we have a good season. Make sure we're trying to trying to challenge challenge in that top six and even beyond. It. Fantastic, Grant. Thank you very much uh, indeed for that. Well, ladies and gentlemen, a big round of applause goes to yourself for such a uh, broad spectrum of questions being close to our top table tonight. Our appreciation for Terry Brannell, Gavin Baldwin, David Blunt, Andrew Watson, and our first team manager, Jack McCann.